Hello and welcome to the Northern Broadcasting Show. My name is Cash, I'm the current Minister of Culture, and uh, we recently had the RP reading with Pridania, uh, which we recorded, but this is the news show segment of the Northern Broadcasting Show. I am joined by Vivanko. Hello everyone, I am Vivanko, your favourite uh, NBS anchor, you've probably known me from past uh, shows and probably known me because because I tend to lurk in the shadows of the disco talking about law. Uh, you may also know me because I've been, I am a deputy minister of, re not of radio, not anymore, uh, uh, for so have it. I'm a deputy minister of the Ministry of Culture. I have, I have been Justice, Chief Justice, and I am currently Bar Commissioner and Election, election Commissioner for the North Pacific. And we also have with us today Holden. Hello everyone, I'll keep my introduction brief. Uh, you know, I'm the Minister of Foreign Affairs here in TMP. Um, I've done you know, all sorts of stuff in all sorts of different places, but that's where I am at now, and so that that's how I'll introduce myself. <laughs> perfectly fine, perfectly fine, Holden. So, with the news show, um, we have a lot to cover, um, but what we're starting with today, um, as we come to the end of the term and host our first Northern Broadcast show in quite some time, we feel it would be good to go over some of the ongoings of the past term, some of the things that have happened, um, under the administration um, throughout the last few months. Um, under the current delegate Palais, we've seen a lot of things changing, um, a lot of things happening, some exciting, some very interesting things, um, and we can't wait to speak about them. Uh, so the first topic is the Pax Polaris Oxidans. Um, now, Holden, would you like to give some, uh, just a basic overview of what, uh, of what this treaty is? Um, who the who the signatories are, um, and just whatever your thoughts on it are as the foreign affairs minister. Yeah, of course. So the Pact of Paris Occidens uh, was a treaty that we started negotiating back in late May. Um, I won't say who kind of you know brought us together, but suffice it to say, it wasn't us. This was something that we were kind of brought in the loop about and. Just kind of you know came together over a period of about a couple weeks or so before we presented it um the current signatories are the uh the new pacific order or the pacific, the pacific and the west pacific and what it does essentially is the sort of a mutual uh, mutual defense pact where an attack on one of us is an attack on all of us um we kind of thought it was a little bit necessary in the event and in, in light of certain recent developments in the gameplay world I'm sure that certain listeners of the NBS would no doubt be familiar with the uh, continual raids on Stargate by the Brotherhood of Malice. Um, just, just for instance, just one thing that perhaps may have informed our thinking a little bit on how and why we did it. Um, but suffice it to say, this is something that kind of we had been thinking about doing for a while, and uh, you know, we were presented with the opportunity to kind of formalize some some cooperation, and you know stand together as feeders it was something that we obviously wanted to jump at so um yeah i mean in terms of other details it's the standard treaty stuff you know we're going to recognize each other we're not going to spy on each other that sort of thing um you know i would say that the big and really the radical move was the ngc you know the pto is kind of unique in the sense that it is three regions rather than simply a bilateral defense uh, mutual defense treaty but um you know it it's certainly something considering that it has been, I don't know if we've ever had a treaty with the TWP, we certainly have with the NPO. So, it, you know, it also represents a big leap forward in terms of our interactions with those regions. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that, it's, definitely, that is... it's definitely been a departure from no our norm, but it's also been something that I think we have kind of been refreshing in the sense that it's, uh, you know, it, it is, like I said, a departure from that norm. So it's been something that we can kind of say, look, we're doing something a little different we're doing something a little new that's, you know, also benefiting us in a way that perhaps some other moves previously, you know, maybe haven't, maybe. I still yeah, have I to think... complain about the way it was handed at first, how it was announced. I still have to complain about it uh, because uh, for the listeners or what or viewers who may not be aware, 
when the the treaty was announced for the general public, uh, it was uh, stated in a in a manner. Uh, we were told, as uh, Holdom can confirm, that it was uh, written the announcement in a way that it can be announced as uh, in the same regions at the same time in the same language. The thing is, uh, the way it was presented in TNP, it did sound at first as if it was about to breach the uh, regional assembly's uh, sovereignty. We know so in the I end will... this, this didn't happen, of course, it uh, both went through, it went through the debate as well. Uh, but yeah, so still, I on. have as to... The, as, as the as... Foreign Affairs Minister, do you, do you have anything that you can offer any insight on, on these comments at all? So some of that, Vavanko, was kind of... It, some of it is down to the way that trees are ratified in the other two regions. Because the NPO doesn't actually vote on it, obviously. At least not. they don't have procedures that involve voting that I'm aware of. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not the expert on how the Senate functions. I'm not the uh, expert on how the NPO ratifies treaties. So I can't, for instance, say whether or not they had internal processes that would uh, require them to take a long time uh, or take some time to, you know, go from presenting the treaty to ratifying. TWP similarly, even though they have a regional assembly in the Hall of Nations, as I am aware, the Hall of Nations does not ratify treaties. Uh, so they may, they are obviously presented to the Hall of Nations. Um, but there's not that sort of, there's not the same sort of formal democratic ratification process that there is for us. And some of it in terms of when, when and how it was presented came down to the fact that the delegate has to present the treaty. So even if I, for instance, am the one who makes the announcement in our gameplay embassy, um, you know, I also, I cannot be the person who then goes into the regional assembly and makes the announcement about the treaty. And we were ready to do, um, we were ready to have the announcement made when we made it. And there were some other extenuating factors in terms of people who were going to make the announcement in terms of their time, where it was a, con a time that was convenient for them, even if it was not a time that was convenient for us to sync up the two announcements. Um, so it really wasn't, it was not any, there wasn't any malice meant to the regional assembly. Um, what it was was simply a matter of divergent schedules and the fact that we're just kind of human. <laughs> and also, you know, the, the fact that, you know, we have different procedures you know, great procedures, but still different procedures uh, from TWP and the NPO. Uh, and if, if I can, if I can also offer some comments here as well, um, for, from a from a different angle, as as someone who doesn't have a lot of the historical context of of um, the, the the treaty as much as as you two might, um, I think it is is very promising that we um, as a region are reaching out to regions um, and ratifying these treaties that. It, it, in in some ways, that there, there are cultural differences in the past, historical differences um, in the ways that you know governments are run, and I think it is very promising that we are moving in the direction of diplomacy um, rather than indifference, um, especially in the face of, um, as you said before, Holden, um, attacks on Stargate. Um, I, 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 in terms of where this goes, um, can either of you offer any insight? as to where these relationships with um, the West Pacific and the Pacific uh, could go in regard to this treaty. Because one of the things that um, was mentioned um, in the thread um, on the forums is that we can build on these relationships and we can um, accomplish more going forward. So I, I can say that with confidence that, you know, as, as of right now, uh, we don't, I don't believe we have plans to pursue a bilateral treaty with either the NPO or TWP. If they, okay. you know, if they asked, I'm sure we would be inclined to at least listen. Um, though I obviously am not going to speak for Ghost. If Ghost wants to, Ghost wants to rebut those comments later, he certainly can. Um, but in terms of what we meant, what that, what, what that was meant for, in terms of you know we're we, we're moving forward. There's an opportunity for deeper relations in the future. That really was with a little guide to the MGC. Um, because we had already, we, I mean, I can't divulge why they started about the time that the PVO was still being ratified. Um, but we were already having some preliminary discussions about the MGC at the ground this time. And so we were, we, we were pretty confident at that point that we were going to have something in the future that would also include MPO and the TWP and uh, the other partners who were in the MGC. So 
it really that was not meant to be prophetic of like oh we're looking at you know bilateral treaties with the NPO and TWT. Um, though again, as I said, if they came, I imagine we would at least listen. If, you know, if Zoriat or uh, Vara came to me and said, "Hey, we want to do a bilateral treaty," like I said, I am sure that we would at least we would at least you know hear them. We wouldn't say no immediately. Um, but you know, really, was it was with an eye towards the MGC. It was not meant to be like super duper um, prophetic about some something that might be coming later this term. Though, again, I guess that's still on the table. <laughs> Cool. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for a bit more of the context uh, behind that. I'm sure we'll have a lot to talk about con uh, concerning the modern gameplay compact. Uh, compact. Um, Vivanco, do you have any uh, any comments uh, on on what we've spoken about just now? Uh, I do not have much of a comment, uh, other than uh, I want to ask the uh, minister. Uh, I myself already know the answer, but I want to do it. Uh, I want to uh, ask it, uh, just as I ask uh, Palais, uh, when they were elected in the uh, s small interview that I did for them uh, in the post-electorate, I want to ask Holdem's view on the uh, and their own uh, uh, explanation of the history uh, about uh, the brotherhood of Malice to, because you know it's good that we're talking about the news and what's happening within the region. But I believe the listeners who may not be completely hooked or know much about uh, national states, maybe they are new to the region and so on, they perhaps do not know why the PPO had passed and how it all began, and most of all, who are the Brotherhood of Malice. So, if yeah. I could get the uh, ministers uh, to enlighten us. So, they are actually an older raider group, um, specifically, followed, uh, specifically founded, I believe, in 2012 um, by players probably better known, at least one of the players is better known for their contributions to the Blackhawks, that would be uh, Ka, Reventus Ka. And um, they... I, I can't really speak as to the pre-2021 or 2022, I guess, iteration of the Brotherhood of Malice. That's just not something I have, you know, a great amount of knowledge on. But, um, you know, they're at least in their previous, in their current iteration, they have kind of made a penchant for making raids and doing things that people would not dare to otherwise do. And in some sense, I will say it's been good for the game, uh, at least in the sense that um, you know, they've, they've, ginned up, they've ginned up activity, they've managed to bring a degree of controversy in an era where there hasn't been much controversy, simply because, you know, defenders have been winning, and defenders, for better or worse, aren't super, they're not, they're not really into creating controversy, you know, blessedly for us FA people, but, you know, it, it makes for a boring meta sometimes. Um, but in terms of BOM, you know, they, you know, there's good, you know, there's that, there's that adage about, well, there's, no publicity is bad publicity. That's untrue. <laughs> um, you know, occasionally there are times where it would be better, perhaps, to not generate publicity. And one of those times is when you're rating Stargate, because, you know, we do still hold Stargate to be really good friends. I've gotten to know Kaz a little bit over the last couple months just talking to him, you know, about Stargate stuff. And he's a great guy. Um, you know, do recommend when he's around. But, um, you know, that's kind of been their penchant was raiding Stargate. There have been a couple of other incidents in, in the past couple of months that, you know, I'm, I'm sure people will be willing to talk about in other places. But, you know, for the sake of time, I don't really want to get into here. Um, but they have kind of come back with a, with a, with a vengeance, uh, you know, in 2022. They've, they've shown some signs a little bit of tapering off recently. But, uh, you know, it, it's basically older raiders kind of coming back for... I don't want to say one last hurrah, but, you know, uh, you know, kind of coming back and trying to relive their glory days. more. Um, and, and they've kind of, like I said, they've adopted this attitude of, you know, we're not, we don't really care about what we hit. We're going to kind of make sure that you follow our goal, which is their faint now, I think, infamous, you know, Vader unity, maintain a founder, sign a treaty thing. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I appreciate all the comments. Um, 
now the modern gameplay compact um which i as you have said is 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 sort of a, a follow up to the ppo um in it in its intentions um could you give a little bit of context um for listeners who aren't as familiar with the mgc um what it's aiming to accomplish um and why yeah so really its main goal is just trying to tie up people who have identified sort of in this odd I want to say odd, but certainly in this middle space between, you know, hardcore Ragerdom and hardcore Defenderdom over the last, you know, say decade, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in an agreement that will, you know, help us to, you know, further deepen our ties culturally and, on, and, and obviously kind of recognize each other and also to, you know, give us a leg up as we move towards this Frontier Strongholds update that, you know, we know is coming, but we don't exactly know when that is coming. So, you know, one of those things that was really the big motivation behind it was making sure that, you know, any frontiers that any of our allies agree to make, whether that is, you know, Euro or Boulder, who are at least Euro, I, I know at the very least is having this, you know, still is having this debate about whether they're going to go frontier, whether they're going to stay, you know, kind of in the status quo of a stronghold. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we want to make sure that we're protecting our allies and that at the same time, you know, if we choose to make the decision to create a frontier, uh, that we do the same. I, I can't speak as to whether we're going to or not yet, um, but you know, suffice it to say that you know, if we chose to, we also want to have that assurance that we're that we're th that we're there and we have something that kind of protects us and and also protects that region, whatever that region may be, if we chose to do it. Cool, uh, Vivanko. Any any comments at all? Uh, uh I just want to since this. Uh... This uh, multilateral treaty has of such importance and it has been linked with the PPO. Uh, to remark that uh, in both of the treaties, uh, both the Pacific and the West Pacific are signatories. Uh, mm -hmm. When the both of the um, treaties practically uh, serve the same... Uh, function uh, in the way of mutual recognition, mutual defense, intelligence sharing, and uh, since I just wanted to ask from my own uh, ignorance and maybe a bit of uh, boldness, uh, since we already have this sort of uh, multilateral treaty with uh, these two other regions, why to make this another one in which they are again included into? Is it like a, a, a more condensed version or more yeah, personalized I mean, really, version? Or? Yeah, I mean, I would say that the big, it really is, there's more content into it. You know, we are certainly um, moving in a direction. Like, the, the main reason that we had the MGC is to move in the direction towards that Frontier and Stronghold update. Um, and really, that is kind of the main goal there. It was getting ready for that, while also kind of reaffirming our, at least, commitment to... You know, staying independent, staying in this position where we are willing to work with, you know, both sides and we are willing, to, or at least mostly. Um, and, you know, we're also willing to, you know, defend ourselves and defend our allies as well. Um, you know, PPO was way more mutual defense based. It was way more sort of an attack on one of us as an attack on all of us. And also making sure that all of us were able to bring, you know, our treaty allies under the same umbrella. I think at my count, there were something like 40 regions that are actually included under the PPO umbrella. Um, most of those are our friends over in the United Regions Alliance. Um, but, you know, there are other other regions that are other, yeah, other regions too that fall under that as well. You know, regions like, you know, obviously Boulder, which had the Operation Ragnarok thing, which I'm sure we'll get to next. Um, you know, Europea, trying to think of any, trying to think of others, like Taiji 2 and Stargate as well, you know, you know, historic allies of the North Pacific and the IDU too. You know, historic allies of the North Pacific who also are kind of come under this protection by virtue of that. We want to make sure that basically we're able to protect our own. Um, MGC kind of goes beyond that. Also prepare for you know FNFs and also kind of affirm our you know commitment to independence in a way that really wasn't. You know, I don't want to say it wasn't possible, but certainly was not not at the forefront of the reasoning behind doing the Path Players Hall. Alright. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, with with all of that said, uh, if there are no further comments um, on on those issues or anything that either of you want to mention, I think for me, um, 
hear, hearing about a lot of foreign affairs and and the inter inter regional relationships um, is very interesting because a lot of regions do decide to go in different directions in terms of raiding and defending and it was always very interesting for me because I saw um, both raiding and defending taking place um, but never really got into the gameplay aspect of it and the idea of independence this um, the, the independent manifesto and independence is as an as an idea that the North Pacific has taken on now um, and has had for for a while um, is, is an interesting position to take um, and I think that it allows um, the North Pacific to have that um, sort of control in that direction going forward um, and with with all of this um, being said and with the PPO and with the MGC I think it is good that the North Pacific is being proactive on on an inter on, on an interregional scale um, I myself am not incredibly well versed as i as i as i've said i've recently returned but it is very uh it is very interesting um i do want to uh comment sorry for the interruption uh yeah, no worries uh i believe we have to i believe it is a must that we have to talk about the repeal of the non-aggression pact that we have with osiris considering the impact of the ppo and the mgc and the Brotherhood of Malice, uh, all of this had, has led for a non-aggression pact to be repealed. And we cannot just gloss over that, I believe. Am I not correct? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah no. If we want to get into that, we can. Um, I mean, I can say that this is the particular top. This is not a topic that I can talk you know, in super deep depth about, but I can certainly share some insights and some reasons, some, you know, Certain things, for sure. I just wanted to make a comment. And yeah, for sure. Just, I just wanted to clarify, since we are, after all, uh, a new show, I believe it, it is kind of like a, a moral um, obligation to not only inform of the treaties that have been signed, but also of the treaty that has been repealed. Because, you know... It's equally important the new yeah, yeah. the new treaties and new uh, methods of uh, interaction that we have are as important as the ones that we sever. I I will um, speak I will speak first on uh, from a position of of, of honesty um, in that I um, cannot offer uh, a lot of insight as. Um, a recently returned Minister of Culture, um, a lot of what has inspired the uh, PPO and the repeal of the Non-Aggression Pact um, is uh, quite quite significantly outside of my um, uh, confident knowledge. Um, so if Holdem has any any comment that they that they would be able to make, um, that yeah. that would that would be appreciated on it. Uh, just to you know offer a bit more of a um, ministerial um, and contextual uh, basis for that topic. For sure. Um, I mean, I can say, you know, at least openly that a lot of this was motivated around Operation Ragnarok, uh, the exposure of that and, you know, certain actions that Osiris chose to take in light of that. Um, you know, there was a certain amount of coordination that obviously went in. We were, you know, it, you know Balder is a treaty ally of all three PPO partners and, you know, I, I, I can say at least the other thing I can say is that I spent I think seventeen hours on NS that day. Um, Incredible. You know, <laughs> got up at nine because obviously we had heard about it that afternoon, and I'd been doing stuff that you know the evening before. And then I got up at nine, you know, got up at like nine thirty. Immediately, kind of went into what what it was, what I was doing, and then I had a I had a couple. I had like a big conversation I had at noon, and then I had another one at four. And then you know, kind of things kind of snowballed from there, and I didn't go to bed till like two fifteen that night. It was only after we had gotten our statement out. Um, Insanity. <laughs> yeah, so it, was, it was definitely a, a time and a half. Um, yeah. Nation states is definitely like that, where when a big <laughs> when a big event happens and you can't you can't take yourself away from it. Um, that that sentiment is is totally shared. Yeah, just like um, politics, you just have to yeah, act as yeah. quickly as you can in, and avoid the. Uh, uh, you have to avoid the shit from hitting the fan. Yes, yeah. 
Now, if both of you are comfortable moving on from those topics, um, we yeah, do we have, yeah, yeah. I am content. Um, cool. So, Vivanko, we're going to be calling on you a little bit more here. Um, oh, no. <laughs> um, so, the judicial reforms. Um, I would say uh, reforms that have taken place over over quite some time. I remember the last time I was active in TMP, um, the attorney general was uh, the attorney general was still a thing, um, and the office of the at attorney general. Um, can you give us some context for the judicial re reforms? Why they happened? Um, what the inspiration for them was? What it's led to? Um, any any basic summary from from your perspective? It is revenge from bringing the in the NBA <laughs> yeah, 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 thing. <laughs> Oh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just calling on your expertise at the moment. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see how it is. All right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, for those who are not were well, people who have just come in, uh, the attorney general was an office that uh, was constituted, uh, was present within the constitution of the North Pacific. Uh, it got to a point in which uh, not many people run for office. Uh, and the office kind of stagnated, which prompted the uh, the legislative uh, to uh, create the uh, the Agora Act, uh, which translated, if I remember properly, as the Attorney General Office. Uh, basically, that it had a ring uh, outlived uh, the expected lifetime of the office. It was a constitutional reform, and. It did have some pros and some cons, but uh, most people uh, uh, were bought to vote for the Agar Act because of the promise of the institutionalization of some form of bar so that, uh, you know, it is in a whole vacuum of power. Uh, I was the last Attorney General of the North Pacific, as the most people remember, and like to tease me about it sometimes as well. <clears throat> <laughs> and, you know, uh, things did not go as planned. Uh, there, uh, since the Attorney General was the one who did the prosecution and everything, there was now uh, a, the question on how are we going to do the prosecution now. And there was the reform of the legal code in which uh, the prosecution was first uh, appointed by the delegate and then uh, refranted or confirmed by the regional assembly. That did cause some problems in the form of uh, slowness. It did have some legitimacy, it did have the legitimacy of the prosec prosecution of, as a proper uh, representation of the interests of the region because it was voted directly by the citizens of the region but it was slow it was slow to have uh, a willing prosecutor it was slow to move motion it to a vote and then it was you know things of parties go slow and Trials tend to be slow, so things can be done properly. And that so, did, uh, uh, between the Agora Act and this uh, refreshing idea of the bar, something of two years happened in between. There have been some proposals of uh, bars. I myself uh, drafted uh, an attempt. Uh, but the latest one has gone through and now we are in the process of establishing this bar in which uh, the prosecution will no longer rely directly on the regional assembly making it slow, but it will be run by three uh, bar commissioners, one directly appointed by the delegate, one, appoint, uh, one uh, a member of the court and one uh selected by the court and then voted by the regional assembly which i am the third one the first one the appointed directly by the delegate is cybet i really do not know how to pronounce the name and <laughs> that's stan is how i've always pronounced and the member of the court is current justice uh law dominator 
Yeah, so from from what you said, um, would, it, would it be an accurate um, abstraction of, of these events to say that um, the establishment of the bar, you know, uh, commissioners and, 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 and the um, abandonment of the Attorney General Office is to streamline the judicial process in TMP and make it more accessible for for people to get into and to make these um, cases um, g uh, be prosecuted faster, basically. I really doubt that the object... I really doubt that the objective of the abolishment of the Attorney General to constitute a bar is, uh, is accessibility, not at all, because anyone okay. could have run for Attorney General in the past. It's yeah. just that not pe people did not join, did not want to run. This was just a way of uh, taking off something that people thought uh, it had no importance anymore uh, until shit hit the fan and said, hmm, maybe we need it because of the agility on these cases. Yeah, it's true, we do not... Ha the court uh, isn't used very much. It's, uh, it's a miracle if we have a case once in a term and that is absolutely not maybe a case in two terms three terms you know but when we have a case we cannot let it suddenly stop for a month or two because we are still waiting for a proper co prosecution right it was uh, just uh, a thought that hey we can fix this and then two whole years passed yeah. Okay. Hold them. Do you have any any questions for Vivanko on the judicial reform at all? Um, if 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 you're interested. Not really. In I mean, okay. I I mean, I would say I, I'm glad it happened. I think it it's certainly something that will hopefully generate. It needed to be done. And, you know, at least in the sense of you know people who are hopefully interested in those legal processes. I will say, if I didn't have as much on my plate as I did, I certainly might be interested in doing so. <laughs> um, but I, I, I do hope that this is a, you know, a step forward in, in creating those legal eagles that I think, you know, probably our soulmate and, and, and the region that is closest to us in terms, not only in terms of diplomatically, but certainly in terms of the way they do things in Euro. I, I hope that, you know, we, we can kind of emulate them and their proud legal tradition with this. So we have yeah, a very, we'll see, but I'm cautiously optimistic. <laughs> I have to say we, uh, we, I can be proud to say that the North Pacific has a very rich legal history and very rich and uh, known full of how the law works and how justice works among not only its citizens but past citizens and past happenings. And it's, it is something that it has happened before, it can happen again. We have the, we, we have the example of the past of uh, really Oh, uh, hello. Oh, uh, no, that was me. Or oh, I think we lost a fan girl. No, oh, sad. I can say um, until until we do hear from him uh, again. I can say as someone who has not been. Um, All right, I am back. Sorry, my microphone oh, just skipped. <laughs> No worries, no worries. I was just, I was just saying, Vivanko, as someone who um, has not been um, as involved, I, I am very interested in the judicial process in uh, TMP. Um, but obviously, in establishing bar commissioners and and all of the judicial reform that's taken place, um, it, it is very interesting. Um, as I say, as someone who is not as interested, not necessarily as interested, but. Um, it, it, it is nice that, that there is reform happening and that the office is being made a bit more accessible for people. A bit more, a bit, I mean, you did say it wasn't an issue of accessibility. I'd say. I really would more, doubt it. More, more an issue. What, what would you say is more of an issue of? Would you say it's. There's an, it was more of an issue of we have a problem, we have to fix it. It wasn't an issue of, hmm, we have to make it more accessible. No, it was an issue of, hmm, right. this, this doesn't work. Let's get rid of it and build upon the ruins of it. Okay, I, I have to say my storage space is, uh, is I've just had an alert on my computer. I did have over two gigabytes, but um, apparently it's gone down um, significantly. So I'll keep still the recording. Data. 
yeah okay that's fine um i i may have to to cut my recording um regardless um but yeah um are, are there any are there any final comments or or anything you'd like to mention regarding the judicial reform before we move on it is uh certainly a good start but we cannot just put this reform and then and then just now just cross our arms lie down and say okay we've done all we could we're done. We we said we would do a reform. We did it. Now shut up. No, this is a first step. This is a whole ass. This is a whole project. This is a a first step of of a process of um. Say revivifying the legal life within the region. Okay. It's, it's just the. This is just baby steps. We have the bar commissions, all right. Now we are creating the bar commission proper. We are preparing a list of uh, initial members, uh, a, a small rule set of how things are going to run. But this isn't just we did the reform. That's done. No, the laws are a living thing. Just as society keeps on changing, the game keeps on changing. Of We've seen how gameplay is changing, but and so does uh, how the region works. And as long as society continues to advance, if we want the region to advance with it, we have to let the laws advance with it. And if the laws advance and the judicial system does not advance, then we are just putting uh, a rod in the middle of the wheels. We have to keep okay. going. We have to keep going until ad infinitum. Well, I think you are one of the best people in the region to be taking that, that area forward, Vivanko. I am just a person with a law degree. <laughs> exactly. I am not. <laughs> um... <laughs> Um, so yeah, if we're, if we're all comfortable moving on the next, um, the next topic is the successful repeal and replace of Europea's commendation. Um, now hold them. This is, uh, an area that I believe you are more of an expert in. Yeah. I mean, I've been, you know, uh, besides being a 20 time WA author in my own right, I actually commend Europea was number 20. Um, you know, was WA Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. I mean, after the first time, it, after the first couple of times, it kind of gets so hum, I will say. Like, you know, you, you see something pass, it's like, oh, it just it passed. Like, there's, not, there's nothing special with it. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, this was certainly something that, you know, when it goes to nice, you know, we, we read it over at one point and we said, yeah, this is something that we can absolutely, or we think to be repealed. It doesn't do a great job of, it didn't really do a great job, the SC 234, not SC 412, or SC 413, rather, which is the current commendation that Europea has, um, but rather SC 234, which is the prior commendation they had, you know, it didn't do a great job, in our opinion, in, in really, in really extolling Europea's virtues and explaining why exactly Europea was commendable. So, uh, you know, we said, let's, let's repeal it and, and let's give them something that hopefully they're, you know, give them something that really explains why Euro is so great. Yeah, and and uh, as long as I have uh, been in TMP, I've been aware of the region that Europea is, um, as vast and as incredible historically as it is being a, not being a game-created region. Um, oh, some other as, ones. Yeah, yeah, there, there, are, there are plenty of regions that are just breathtaking in terms of how they've built their um their nation base um and their player base and europea is is at the very peak of that um and it is it is interesting um seeing um a lot more a lot i would say a lot more world assembly activity in in tmp you yourself hold them uh, as you said are 20 time ga author um or uh, oh, not world ga assembly. author just, just yeah in, world assembly just, yeah just in the wa in general yeah yeah which to me is is incomprehensible it's a big shot. Uh, <laughs> yeah um so it 
And I think another topic on our list that, that links very well with this is the advancement of our World Assembly authors. Um, and it is good to see uh, we have quite a few members um, of the World Assembly Ministry currently who are actively drafting and actively getting things into uh, quorum. Um, and it, it, it is a lovely sight, I will say. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't really say I, I, I can really speak to that as much as, uh, you know, say Chipley or maybe perhaps Dero might have, because, you know, I, once you've done this, once you've done that job for so long, I will say it does kind of burn you out a little bit, as does, you know, doing any job for, you know, eight months, especially when you've been effectively doing it for longer. Um, so, you know, at, for me at least... Like, it's certainly great, you know, not being the only one anymore. Uh, not saying I ever was, but certainly there were times when, you know, there were certainly fewer TNPers, and I was the main one doing stuff. You know, it's nice today to see, uh, you know, several people who are in TNP, people that, you know, and we have a couple more, I will say, who are, you know, going to be joining us here shortly, hopefully. Um, you know, people that I have specifically have been talking to and trying to see if they'll be interested in you know joining us here in TNP, um, you know, specifically on the strength of our WA. So, um, you know, I, I will say that it's certainly nice to see. Um, and, you know, we'll see how, we'll see if that trend continues and if, you know, if we can kind of, you know, get back to having kind of, I don't want to say the World Assembly is a TNP dominated institution, but the World Assembly is certainly a place where TNPers are kind of at the center of not just power, but certainly as well yeah and um speaking a bit more on um the specific um security council resolution of um you know repealing the commendation and then replacing another one i just want to pick your brains a little bit was there anything in particular about your appear that while drafting you um had had, had come to realize or that you deserved were you thought was sort of the pinnacle of, of this newer resolution to, to sort of more accurately represent how great of a region and how deserving they are. Was there anything in particular about Europea or was it more of just a, a, a general, they are great? Well, I'll say some of it, I will say like generally the FA stuff, you know, I, I won't say that uh, Souls did a, you know, did a bad job with writing, um, writing that resolution in terms of the FA stuff, because there's certainly, uh, you know, talking about the Arnhelm Declaration, which is a big thing that really kind of UCRs in on to order to become a big part of the gameplay fabric anymore. Um, you know, things like that, things just kind of Euros FA generally is being super impressive in having these guys with, you know, probably the hardest core defenders there are out there in TGW and also, you know, being able to simultaneously work with portions of Raiderdom that, you know, are hated by the wardens like it's certainly something that is just super cool to see um but the main thing that kind of stuck out to me when i was writing this and, and one of the things that we really tried to hit and in this resolution kind of explain in a way that i don't think that the resolution the 234 did really well um was euro's domestic culture specifically their culture around democracy and journalism and kind of what we're doing right now um because you know i think that maybe maybe north pacific and listeners aren't as familiar with it which i think is kind of a shame um, but, you know, Europea has a very vibrant media culture, um, you know, not just state run in terms of the European Broadcasting Corporation, but also, you know, they have a ton of news outlets that just are privately run that do some very impressive work, um, you know, stuff that I enjoy reading. I have an account on Europea's forums, of course. So, you know, it, you know, full disclosure here, because this is a, this is a top, this is a bone of contention in the, uh, Resolution. I am a European citizen. I don't do anything with my European citizenship. This is why I felt comfortable offering the resolution in the first place. Um, but I am a European citizen, and you know, I, I you know, I subscribe to the what's called the, what in their servers called the paper pal rule. And essentially, you get to read all you, that kind of things you whenever somebody posts a new article, and you get to read some really impressive work from people who you know. This is obviously not a full-time job for any of us. So to have to be, to be able to put that kind of dedication and reference that you're doing, like you're crunching numbers on like who deserves an honor. You know, in this case, uh Europea does like a what's what are called ovations for people who have, you know, done a lot for the region over time. So, you know, getting to read like that sort of deep dive data journalism that really that you know takes something that really shouldn't be quantifiable and is able to kind of break it down in terms that are really, really super digestible is just super cool. 
Um, so, you know, that was the main thing that I really wanted to impress upon people was that, you know, Europea has this super vibrant domestic culture, um, you know, and it, it, this really doesn't even extend to the media, though I think the media is kind of the most unique thing about Europea in that regard. Um, but also, you know, the democracy that they have there, the fact that they are, you know, one of the longest lasting continuous democracies in nation states, 15 years, um, you know, incredible. I mean, if we don't, if, if we if we discount if we discount J the JAL coup and we discount the Emperor Matois coup, um, you know, we're we're up at about that same number, probably a little yeah. longer. But if we, yeah. if we if we if we have to include those, then we're actually funny enough. We are actually you know we're up there, but Europe actually has a longer lasting democracy than we do. That's incredible. So, <laughs> so it, it, it's incredible that it's lasted that long. That it's lasted, and also that you know there are people from the very start of that community. You know, people like him, people like yeah, Weapon, yeah. people like Topo, who are still around and are still doing stuff and are still making their presence known and felt today. And and not for nothing, you know, they're just wonderful people too. So, you know, that though like that I would say is kind of the main thing, you know, is just you know, Europea's domestic culture. That was something that I really wanted to harp on in the resolution. And I think I did that successfully, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Um Well, I mean it it, it is it is um it is nice um, to see the, these resolutions and to see Europea get the, the commendation that they deserve. Um, I see a lot of the, um, as you said, uh, Lethen, Hem, I see these names and I, I don't I don't have the, the, the context for, for, for what being in that um, certain community is like over time, um, but it, it is felt, it, it is really felt. Um, and I think, Vivanko, do, do you have anything um, you'd like to add uh, to the to the comments that we made about Europea? Uh, do you have any experiences with the region in general that, that, that you want to share? That I, ha uh, that I, um, I have the pleasure to be, be, to have been the absolute worst mayor that the city state of Arnhem that, uh, that's <laughs> ever had. <laughs> oh, I'm... I was elected and I had <laughs> no idea what to do. Oh, I well, still, I, I... and if someone from Europea who remembers me being mayor, I still have to say, I feel very sorry about my inactivity <laughs> being mayor. I am very sorry. Um, you know, I, I will butt in at this point, kind of talking about the Security Council. You know, we will have another TNP or going up for a vote here in a couple of days, uh, Valentine Z. Uh, they're not necessarily a huge presence in the region. Val, to my opinion, to my knowledge, they were at one point a deputy guild master of the cards guild when it was still the guild and not the ministry. Um, you know, not the ministry superstructure, it was just the guild. Um, but Val's a lovely human. Um, I, you know, you know, even though they're not necessarily perhaps known as a TNP or in the sense that like, oh, they're super identifiable with TNP government and, you know, being a kind of a, in that vein, like, don't let that be lost in anyone. You know, she, you know, he is still as much of a TNP as I think any of us who are sitting here listening or anybody who might be listening is. Um, and, you know, especially if you're, you know, have a nation in TNP. You know, I don't want to say like, yeah, you random listener from, you know, the South Pacific. Like, yeah, you may be a TNP or in spirit, but, you know, and I, I wouldn't like, Dowsey has a nation in TNP and that's what I'm getting at. <laughs> so, yeah. So my point being is like, we, we're going to have another TNP coming up here really soon. Um, and I'm super excited to see that one come up and, you know, just want to put that out there as we talk about the Security Council and the WA. Like, that is something that you know I'm looking forward to, and I hope you know our audience, our listening audiences as well. At least yeah. it isn't like the absolute worst speaker we've ever had, Elfie Grand. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do the inside joke. <laughs> um, okay. Um, well, some great discussions there on Europea and um, on Valentine's Day. Um, who I as well have read um, some some really nice things about um, uh, in in many different places. Um, but moving on um, now, this is this is the topic: uh, Pride Month and the Pride Month competition, um, and the best democracy day uh, by numbers in two years. So we have two things here: that culture uh, previously under uh, Bootsy um, uh, got done. Um, now, as I said, um, returning quite recently, I wasn't in the mix um, during these events, um, so I will have to rely on on, on both of your experience of those. Um, uh, the great terms... merging of ministries, here we go again. <laughs> I have very strong opinions on this. 
Okay, okay. Um, well, would you like to start? What, what, so what, what, what was your experience of, um, of the Pride Month and the Pride Month competition? Um, obviously, it's very, uh, you know, it's very nice that we can, we can celebrate um, these things on nation states. Um, and I think that um, a lot of good um, and a lot of good discussion and a lot of good uh, fun events have come from it. I have to say the prime, uh, the pride, uh, as important as it is, uh, as important as it is, as it is uh, me myself being part of the LGTB, LGBT uh, community. Uh, sorry, English is hard. It's not my main language. You'll have to uh, You'll have to excuse me. Absolutely, no worries. You're doing a great job. Um, more than just. Uh, a very important event because of the huge, uh, you know, political weight that it has. Uh, pride. It also of course, was. Yeah. It also was a huge test for the great merging of ministries that just happened. For those that you know that do not know, uh, previously we uh, culture was its own ministry, and so was communication, which was. Uh, uh, like uh, authors and like uh, publish uh, written articles, and then we also have the radio in which the NVS was was its own ministry, due to lack of activity on on and of people, uh, communi uh, communications and radio well were, were merged, and so the Ministry of Media was created, but still it didn't quite work uh, and that's when this huge immersion within the Ministry of Culture was done and Pride was the biggest most uh, challenging thing because we have people from culture that were more experienced in this we have people from radio who are practically new to this sort of huge events we have people from communications who, you know, the activity wasn't the best, not much publications were made, and it was a real test by the flames on what the Ministry can do. Uh, the Ministry, in my opinion, it can be quite biased since I was a uh, deputy, went quite well, we did uh, uh, coordinated uh, event called the Pride Parade with the European some other regions if I do not remember properly I have very it was just your affair, yeah? yeah I have just very I have very bad memory lately sorry it was uh, a few fun events we were really strong about the importance of LGBTQ people's rights because as I always say in the RMB, and I got in a lot of trouble because of it, uh, trans rights are human, human rights, and I'm going to say it clearly. Of course, and, yes. Uh, and if you don't think so, uh, from my own perspective, fuck you. Um, it is a thing that to show the importance that the protection of LGBT people is within the region as part of we are the biggest we were now we are the second biggest uh, region after taking over lords we have a duty to we have a responsibility with uh, minorities to give them the protection they deserve Vivanko I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt here um, can I just verify you're still recording uh, aye aye Okay, uh, I'm going to need to stop mine because my storage is going down da dangerously fast. Perfect. Um, so um, I'll just I'll stop mine now and then, and then uh, we can yeah, continue. Yeah, just uh, edit it. Right. Yeah, Perfect. no worries. I will do. Uh, but yeah, it is just... Uh, it was a trial by flame that the ministry survived. But after Pride, we are now in this limbo in which... What do we do now? And just to say, you've uh, you're a new addition. You've recently came back. You're minister, minister, 
and you know the ball has begun to spin around again. The uh, music manager is back again, but uh, yada yada yada. But if I if I can divert a bit from the perspective of Pride, because Pride yeah. was a great success in my opinion, it was a great success. A lot of activity, a lot of uh, passion within. Ooh. And acceptance uh, from among the men's, the members. I just have to point out uh, that what the event showed me was the huge flaw that was the merging of the different ministries into culture. Yeah, um, and as the uh, current minister of culture, I think I, I do have quite relevant experience in in the various different areas. I was never as um, involved in culture as I was in communications when it was a ministry and with radio i had spent a lot of time organizing uh, nbs shows despite never actually appearing in them this is the first time um welcome but, to the road yes <laughs> it, it's, it's been really fun um but when i was minister of communications and it was a position i had multiple times over the years um there was um and, and i will concur with with a lot of with a lot of the sentiments that have been um, that have been made, that there is um, inactivity at the minute, and um, it's very very clear to see that um, there is a struggle between uh, leadership positions and the responsibilities. Obviously, for someone who is new and someone who is joining the executive, um, it can be very intimidating seeing all of these um, bit. I wouldn't say they're massive projects, but what I would say is that a lot of the leadership in a lot of the ministries is already very well established, um, and and they're, they're people who have built the experience over time to be um, as comfortable as possible doing those things. So when I was Minister of Communications, we had a regular um, publication um, schedule, but there wasn't, um, and Fiji could, could probably offer... Um, a whole lot of insight um, as well into this if if they are ever ever on a show and we talk about this again um, but um, when I was Minister of Communications it was very very difficult to uh, although it was done um, and although we did get some issues out and um, the quality of, of, of Fiji's issues um, on many occasions eclipsed what what I could achieve as Minister of Communications. But there is a serious um, lack of interest in uh, in in helping with these um, with these bigger projects like getting uh, top quality issues of TNL out. I um, wouldn't say it's lack of and that, but yeah. more than a lack of passion for it. Yeah, yeah, and and it's hard to build that passion um, from someone who's just joined nation states. Um, because there's people you know, who are willing to do things. Ex yeah, yeah. So th there are definitely people who are willing to do things. It's just motivating them in the right way and motivating them in a way that they can enjoy what they're doing. Um, I remember when I first started writing. Um, I, I'm I'm a massive writer. I love writing, and that's how I got my way into communications because that was what I enjoyed. Um, and I feel like we're at a bit of a disconnect at the moment between how we identify what people enjoy um, and how we can actually get them to the level that that we have come to expect. Um, and I think we've seen over the past um, we've seen over the past few years, I would say that the leadership um, and their ability to put together these projects um, and the plans for these projects may be quite. Um, a lot for new staff to take in and I know it took me a very very long time to become comfortable with a lot of the responsibilities of communications so going back to your comment about merging um, radio communications and culture um, it, it is a very very big ministry um, and I think there are a lot of areas in which uh, we do need to improve um, I'll be totally honest about that um, but I think it starts from creating that enjoyment again and, and finding that and, and I would say fueling that passion in in new staff, because the thing that got me into being a minister and got me into, you know, trying to get into government is the fact that I had so much support and understanding. And if I wrote something, you know, 
I would get the feedback that I needed. Um, and it was because I was passionate about it, but I will, I will admit it, you know, it's a big responsibility and I, I, I've, I've really enjoyed myself, um, so far with music Mondays, theme Thursdays, um, all of these little events where, um, I can, you know, speak with people who I, who I, I'm, I'm just meeting for the first time coming back to TMP. Um, and I don't, I, I, from my position, all I'm trying to do is create an atmosphere in the ministry where people can be passionate about it and people can be um, interested in it without feeling like they have to do um, a ridiculous amount of work or get to the, um, to get to the heights that um, we've seen um, in, in the past few years, because I think that creates a, an awful lot of pressure. Um, and I just want anyone who does anything in communications, the only thing I want is for them to have a good time um, and we'll get as much done as we can over over next term. If if I um, if I'm offered the position, um, I'll, I will do everything I can to get these things done. Um, and I just hope that that passion um, and I hope that that interest uh, rubs off on um, on anyone who who comes in or anyone who is thinking about joining culture or anyone who's thinking about writing um i can confidently say that once you get into it if you're if you're interested and you enjoy it then absolutely go for it and you'll have the support from me i'll be the first person to to shout your praises and and give you the feedback you need mm -hmm. it's an yeah, interesting so, point yeah so I, I think I think you know it, it is a game that you know nation states it is is a game that you have to you have to put your enjoyment of it of it um, in a in a in a high in a high regard because if you're not enjoying what you're what you're doing then I don't think what you produce will be um, as as effective yeah. for you. So, I cannot really uh, say as you can from a perspective of leadership. I've never been a minister, and God knows I've tried to. <laughs> but you know, uh, you're absolutely right. Yeah, um, and uh, as 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 far as it uh, as far as it goes for for other ministries, um, it really is hard to say because um, uh, in, in culture we have such a huge amount of projects and events and and things that we can be working on and enjoying and. Um, I wouldn't necessarily um, say that other ministries are as have as much opportunity for for these kind of projects um, as 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 culture does. Um, so it might be interesting to get Holdem's perspective um, on on that, where foreign affairs comes in next term, if 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 you have the uh, position. Um, but I, I think it would be interesting if, if you had sort of the same outlook um, or if you had a different perspective on it. I mean, I will say I agree with that. You know, there, there are certainly ministries which lend themselves better to the whole idea of having like these big you know, grand projects that kind of we over get to oversee because, you know, FA, like it or not, you know, unless you were kind of as a deputy, unless you kind of get that deputy minister rank, it is extremely hard to do something that's more than just tell me what's going on in your region and especially when you're a player who's connected like i am you know i will say perhaps in contrast to other ministers you know i, I i'm constantly talking to people i'm constantly you know browsing the forums i'm constantly in you know i'm in every i literally am in every other region server if we have a relationship with them kind of at all i am in their server I am, you know, I may not be active because, you know, I'm a human, I have a life. If I spent all my time doing nation state stuff, uh, you know, I, I'd be broke and, uh, you know, that wouldn't be fun. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I, I'm to where I can be. So what, what, I, what my point kind of more is to say is like, you know, for most people in FA, especially if you're trying to get into FA, you know, I, I, I'm kind of thinking about how I'm going to do things next term. And I, I've, made, I've made a decision, though I'm not going to say what that decision is if I'm off of the job again. Um, you know, I know, I, I know what I'll be doing, um, but suffice it to say, like, there's just not a whole lot of room for, for junior staffers, for ambassadors to get that sort of, you know, to be involved in negotiations, unless they're, you know, somebody who's super experienced with that region. Yeah. Um, you know, some, or, or somebody who's proven, like, yeah, I'm an expert on, you know, you know, if I had an ambassador, I'm just going to pick an example. 
uh, you know, let's say I had an ambassador to Lazarus, and that person proved to be like an absolute expert on Lazarus. Like they knew everyone, you know, they knew exactly how things went, they knew exactly how they worked, you know, they know the people super well and they're friendly with them. You know, that would be like the only time I could ever see asking like a standard ambassador to like come to negotiations, come to a talk. Um, you know, beyond that, it's just kind of hard to do that because you know, you want to put your best foot forward. Like, yes, you want to get people experience, but you also want to make sure that you as a region and you as a person, you as a as player, are putting your most, your best foot forward, your most professional foot forward. So it, in that sense, it's kind of hard, uh, at least in FA. Now in WA, obviously it's a little different because, you know, I am firmly of the belief that anyone with enough time and effort can pass the WA resolution. Perhaps that is not the elitist uh, sentiment, but it is the sentiment I hold. And, you know, we have the Heroes of Valhalla project for a reason. We had the accelerator program that was kind of doing okay under Cree Talks. I, I will say that I think it kind of fell into disuse for a number of reasons. Uh, part of it being that we wanted to integrate it into Wall. We were trying to figure out how to do that. And you know, a number of reasons that we couldn't really do that, which, you know, the accelerator was sort of meant for GA projects, though, you know, occasionally there might be something in the SE that warranted it. Um, but in terms of the, like, you know, in, in, in the WA, like, kind of your involvement is what you make of it. Like, if you are the kind of person who doesn't care about the WA, like, it, it conceptually, like, especially if you've been around for a long time, ask how you can help out with, with training new staff. Um, you know, that is the one thing I would say that, you know, is kind of a struggle in WA. You know, we have these tasks, and it's not a very steep learning curve, but it's still a learning curve. And we want to make, I think that one thing that kind of, if I was WA minister again, like, I would want somebody who is eternally focused on my staff who could then, you know, come in and, and say, yeah, this is the training stuff we want to do. You know, we're going to read, we're going to write all these guides that, and show people how to do it. And we're going to give them hands on training to do it as well. Um, and then obviously, you know, if they're interested in authorship. Like, that's the reason we have the, that's one of the reasons we have the Heroes of the Hala program is sort of as a means of connecting authors who perhaps maybe don't maybe haven't done this before but you know a, a lot of the people who've done hero stuff so far are people who have authored resolutions before say um yeah you know, get them in the position where they are going to be able to step up and hopefully you know with some mentorship help you know one of the things that you know i will say i i especially if i know someone's working on something regardless of you know whether whether they've been doing this for years or not like i want to see results uh, I'm a very results-oriented person. It's something that I think it, it, it kind of sucks in, in, in FA sometimes because, you know, being super results-oriented, sometimes FA is a waiting game. But in WA, at least, it is super, um, you know, I, like, you know, I'll say, like, I if, if you commit to writing a project, like, we want to see results and we want to see them as, as soon as like, possible. We don't want to, like, wait, like, months and months and months. You know, obviously, if you have concerns, if you have, you know, like, oh, yeah, no, I've had, like, a tough time at work and, and yada, yada, yada. Like, you know, we're willing to listen, and, and we will help you as much as we can. Um, but I will say, like, if you are considering trying to get involved in WA, especially if you're interested in the authorship aspect of it, you know, just pick up something. Pick up something in Heroes, especially something that maybe hasn't been already claimed, um, and get to work. You know, it, it, at the very least, it's a rewarding opportunity to get to know a player better at the, you know, at the very best. It is your route to not only having that shiny bad in the mission page, but learning a skill that can open up a lot of doors for you down the line and in, in, the, in the wider world. Because, and I'll say like, you know, for me at least, I kind of made my name at WA. People kind of knew who I was because I was turning stuff out at a prolific rate. I, you know, it only took me a little under two years to get 20 resolutions. That includes co-authorships. So, um, you know, that... I think I think I've had two uh, proposals um, fail in four years. So <laughs> you're 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 light years ahead. Yeah, I've um... never written a proposal <laughs> like never. It's a scary I think place. I think you'd be good at it. Um, you know, I will say, but it's um, rewarding. I can imagine it's yeah. incredibly rewarding. It, it, I mean, I, I know I joked earlier in the program about, like, you know, it does kind of, like, the novelty of it wears off after the first couple of times you do it. And I think that is, to some extent, true. But at the same time, like, especially in the Security Council, I would say, like, the, at least to me, like, the Security Council is taking on more meaning because a lot of times when I'm picking a project, for instance, like, I'm choosing someone who I am already familiar with, I'm friends with, or somebody, like, I admire. So, um, you know, it, it becomes a thing of, 
you know, I'm working, I, I want to make sure I'm doing the right, I'm doing the best by this person. And then I want to make sure I'm doing the best by myself. You know, I want to make sure that I'm moving up to my standards. So in that sense, like it always sort of a thrill in the SC. GA, obviously, it, unless it's a topic like I'm super, super passionate about IRL, like a lot of times it's just like, I'll get to this one I can. Um, yeah. But, you know, more to my point, more to my earlier point, like, you know, my whole thing is if you're trying to get involved, like FA perhaps is not really the ministry for you, pardon me, unless you're really wanted to do a deep dive into the people and, and the processes of your region. Um, you know, that's not saying you can't get involved, but it's just a lot harder because, you know, when you're doing formal diplomatic talk, like you want to have people there who are not only professional. And, and I think that, you know, everyone in the FA ministry is mostly, you know, we can all crack jokes from time to time, but, you know, we're professionals. Um, but, you know, we're also people who want to, who know their stuff. You know, we don't want to take somebody who knows nothing just because, oh, they're the ambassador of TEP. Therefore, we have a talk with TEP. So, you know, I have to bring the ambassador to TEP. And I promise, Viv, uh, that is not at you. That is just the reach that popped in my head. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just that sort of thing. Uh, you know, in terms of, like, I think it's just easier in, in other places. Uh, you know, like I said, WA and Heroes of Valhalla, that is my brainchild. And I will always be, you know, a, a very strong supporter of that program and making sure that it, gets it, it it becomes kind of what i know it can be which is i i will be enrolling <laughs> an, SC, an sc incubator that will hopefully allow us to you know put more tm peers on the board of course but also create some really quality authors who are uh you know equipped to handle the challenges of the modern security council now we yeah, only need I... to add flashing colors to say join wa join <laughs> wa yeah, i mean yeah we could do that uh i mean i imagine that can i imagine the vixel can create a gif for us or something <laughs> i i th i think i think as a ministry it's, it's one of the one of the best for, for for new executive staff to get into as well um, there's there's a lot um, going on all the time and there's a lot of stuff that you can quite easily get into I'd imagine obviously it does have quite a learning curve uh, becoming comfortable with uh, the forums and with drafting you know we see a lot of, of new um, authors and, and people drafting who aren't as familiar with um, uh, with drafting and the whole process um, but in the Heroes of Valhalla um, project it, it, it is it is good that that is an avenue for people to go down to learn and to master the sort of um, craft of of resolution writing. Um, but I, I will say now um, we are well over an hour, I imagine, Vivanko. Um, I mean, we I are say, yeah, we are currently um, one hour and twelve minutes. Yeah, so we we have. Um, we have uh, cards developing two new programs, and we have uh, some home affairs updating FAQs. Um, I, I would talk about I would talk about those before we because yeah think we, exactly I don't yeah think we need, I don't think we need to go back in the FA stuff. We can do yeah that. yeah. Um, and if so, people like the show, maybe you could show some support, and we can do another part talking about more news. Yes, I I am. Wink wink. Now... <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm very, very up for um, getting the rest of um, the rest of the topics um, done for people to listen to. Um, um, I, I, I'm not sure if you guys have, have, have had a had a great as great a time as I have, but I've I've really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, this being fun. my yeah, this being my first um, my first show. Um, so, as someone who again has not been massively involved with cards, um, I did I do have a few cool cards. I I. I I can say that. Um, but in terms of the ministry, um, uh, what uh, Palate has um, indicated to me is that we have um, some new programs uh, in the cards ministry. Um, uh, I'm not sure if, if either of you are familiar with those uh, with those plans um, or how involved you are with the cards ministry. But if there's anything you have to say, um, that would be... All I know is that they used to be a uh, guild and now they are a ministry. Yeah. That's that's the full extent of my knowledge. Okay, okay. Well, um, we have um, increasing the value of TMP cards, which I think is quite cool. Um, we have ways um, of making... Uh, I know that we have uh, card awards programs where people can get legendary lotteries. cards and stuff like that. We have lotteries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, it's one of those uh, it's one of those ministries where there's a lot going on, um, and if if people want to get into it, then the, then there are a lot of avenues. Um, I like to call have... it the I like to call it the 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 hidden jewel of TMP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, oh, I was gonna cut in there, but it, it... it's okay. 
Yeah, I was going to say, like, you know, cards is one of those things where I think, especially if you're a newer player, you know, that's the one I would say go for because cards doesn't really require that much knowledge. And I, I don't mean that like in a derogatory sense. I mean it in, in simply in the, in the sense of, you know, if I'm a new player, that's one of the one of the first things, you know, if I was answering my issues and I see this neat little button that I can click on it on the side of my nation, and oh, all of a sudden I have these trading cards. Like really, that's all you need to know to really do this job, like to do the job of being in the cards ministry effectively. Now, certainly there are more yeah. advanced tasks, and I think that's the case in any ministry. Um, you know, that's the reason we have deputy ministers. That's the reason we have ministers. That's the reason that, you know, people stick around in these ministries. But, um, you know, it, it, just conceptually, like, it's a very simple, it's a very simple idea um, to kind of celebrate this feature that we have in this game that, you know, is, it, you know, kind of is in a way sort of our, our version of like baseball cards. Well, literally is our version of baseball cards because they're, they're trading cards. Um, so, I mean, it really is just a matter of like, you know, once you get the very basics now, like that is a ministry that you, that you don't need to know a lot more than the basics to do really, really well, but you also don't need a lot more than the basics to, um, you know, to, to then make it your own thing and kind of do what it is that you're, you want to do with it. Whether that is, you know, building up that dream collection. I know that has been, that's been thought of in the past, um, or, or, or something else like that's certainly something that i think you know cards is again one of those ministries that i would say like do it if you're at all interested because it's just it's super cool yeah yeah it, it is um and i i think i think when when cards were first added um i, I did go through a, a very intense period of, of trying to get the best cards i could um but as soon as i saw some of the the decks that that some people have i i just lost all hope it, it, it's incredible <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah mike's will Man, yeah exactly yeah all, all, I, don't, all I, I, I just want to say that when i first saw the oh cards all of my effort in cards was to get the card of my nation that's it yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i didn't have a, a card of my nation for a long time and now i have like 75 of them on my own on, on hold them so yeah. you know <laughs> it's always really interesting seeing what your cards become worth as well um i i, I have one that um is like an x nation uh, i think like a season two or something um that i saw going for for above one which i guess is okay uh, but some of them go for incredible um value which yeah, to I, me is to me is really funny yeah like i have a an mcm mc macedonia card that that's valued 165 incredible that would be that would be <laughs> one that would be season one Macedonia. yeah i i legendary but that, uh, that's the value in it. I think I think that's what what cards is really for. You know, it, it's that sort of. It, it's just celebrating. It's just it's just a celebration, and and I think it's I, I do think it's less about um, you know, trade like less less about trading, but more about the nations themselves, um, which which is which is where they get their value, um, because it is a sort of, it, it's a nice thing for people to get into building the collections, and I know that's one of the. Uh, the new programs is, is helping people uh, help complete guild member collections and stuff. Um, but yeah, um, after that, after after cards ministry, um, we have home affairs updating FAQs and outdated pages. Now, if we had Casto on the panel, um, he might be able to help us with that a little bit more. I'm not I'm not massively familiar with with what's going on uh, in the future of home affairs. Um, but, yeah, sadly, that is just not my area. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've been deputy for a while, but I don't know the current plans for Home Affairs. Okay. Right. Well, we have we have just from from what I from what I have here um, and from what I've researched, long running, outdated information fixes uh, that needed to be cleaned up and taken care of. So I guess just a bit of uh, of, of maintenance at the moment. It, it would be interesting to see which you know, as, as we have been talking at length about. Um, how new staff get into ministries. Home Affairs is, 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 uh, is, I believe, quite an interesting case in that regard as well, because there's not, you know, 
massive massive projects going on there's there's a lot of general sort of um recruitment and mentoring and lists and stuff like that and i think i think as a minister that would require quite a a different approach getting people getting people into it and and how you can uh, you know uh, as i'm saying with home affairs getting people into those bigger projects because i'm i'm not i'm not as familiar with that but it is it's an interesting case i think because culture and home affairs have vastly vastly different responsibilities and the way that staff get into those uh, responsibilities again and get interested is is going to is going to differ massively yeah basically uh, the way hf ha differs from the uh, cultures what well, radio is more like we have to plan this out we have to think about it ha yeah. has to be it's like a shock it has to be always doing something we have to do yeah, this list, yeah. then this list, then this list. Then we have to do mentorships, then this, then this. They are the 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 machinery that keeps the yeah, na yeah. the nations from you know the R and B suddenly you create a nation. Oh, you get a telegram. Oh, we have a Discord and a role play channel. Hmm, maybe I should join. Yeah, that, yeah I, I say it because that's exactly how I got in this absolute drug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, i do agree um but i think that you know we we, we were talking as well about uh, inactivity levels and things like that and and one thing that that could be a, a really really good area to focus on next term is is on that recruitment getting those interested people in again it's very hard to say where things are going to go or what you know what will happen uh, for sure but um it is something that needs looking at and and i hope that that next term we can we can really you know put our foot down on it um and and get some consistent activity which i hope i can share you know a lot of of, of the things i enjoy um with communications that i used to do with writing and with the radio show and and, and events which is an area that i'm looking forward to getting a bit more into as well um but yeah um in terms of topics i don't think there's there's much remaining I mean, we could always talk about the huge debacle the speaker offers suffered, like early in the term. <laughs> I think But we need. I don't think we need. Yeah, it's that, such <laughs> a big. It's it's such a big topic that. Hmm. Guess we, we can, have we... to wait until the second yes, issue. Exactly. But exactly. only if people show support. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I can't. We taking myself seriously <laughs> I, i i think i think the 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 enjoyment i've had from it is is virtue enough um but if we're if we're coming to the end um i i think what are we on now vivanko an hour and we are currently hour and... one hour and 22 minutes okay okay that, i think that's a good i think that's a good runtime. Um, I, i think we've done Yeah, we've we've done we've done quite well in in covering the topics that we could we could do um, with the time we have uh, for the new show. Um, so yeah, right. if we are if we are all um, if we are all happy and we have no further comments, um, this has been the Northern Broadcast Show. I have been Cash. I've been Bivanko, and I will probably continue to be Bivanko. <laughs> Uh, and I'm Paul Dunn. Thank you for listening. <laughs>